I don't think I'm going to use this mic, uh, so I'll pass it on. Okay. I guess I'm just an old-fashioned kind of dinosaur type of person. Uh, That's all right, I appreciate it. <laughs> Praise God. As long as God gets his mileage in us, we keep on rolling. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 It's a blessing. How many of you know that the Lord is there for you? Thank and I'm you speaking Lord. to those who, who are not here in the library, those that are out there in, in uh, Cyberland, Media Land, those that, are, that might hear this message uh, days or years from now, those that are struggling, you've got help in the Lord. Amen. You've got help in the Lord. I want Amen. you to know, Amen. no matter what you're going through, the Lord will pull you through it. Hallelujah. He can work with you in whatever problems you have. Okay? You, Don't be stuck in what society says. Get in that word and know that you have help in the Lord. You, Lord. He's the one that says, fear not. I will be with you. He's not going to leave you by yourself, okay? The Bible talks about that. No matter what you're going through, no matter what kind of shame that has been put on your back through the devil's ploys, no matter how long you've been locked up in jail or prison, Jesus can set you free spiritually, amen? He can put you on the road to righteousness, okay? No matter about your sexual persuasion, no matter about your gender ambiguity, God will put you on straight street, okay, just like he did Paul, Saul, okay? So understand that the Lord will be with you. You just got to reach for him, amen? And he'll be there for you. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you again. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your provision. We thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. And we ask that ears and hearts be open to the word that you have given us today, which is from you. We thank you for this time. Bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We are still in our sermon series. And our sermon series is called God's Got All Power. Where is yours? Did you all hear that? Yes. He said God's got all power. Now where is yours? And we've talked about this. We've talked about this before. That uh, uh, So we're in part 10. So we've been at this for a while. Mm -hmm. And although this uh, series is pretty intense, the subject matter is pretty intense. It's pretty strong for a reason. But the truth is, it's also pretty simple. Mm -hmm. It's a strong message, but it's a simple message. Because the message that, that the Lord God is putting out is that all power is in him and comes from him. Amen. All right? Amen. Praise God. The message is that God holds everything in this world, everything that's in this universe, all creation and beyond, everything is held in the palm of his hands. Amen. Okay? Amen. His own hand. Amen. Amen. That, that means that God is in control of all that goes on in the world. All right? I just uh, saw breaking news last night about some astronauts landing. Did you see that? They landed in the ocean somewhere. And uh, everybody was standing there with rapt attention waiting for them to come down to the sea if the if, if the capsule would disintegrate or not. And they said, well, we're still learning things. That's what the scientists said. They said, we have to now check them to see if these astronauts are going to be well, to see if they'll age differently, to see if their bone density changes, to see if their uh, cognitive uh, 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 abilities change or have declined because of the time they've been going up and down in outer space. See, scientists know some things, but God knows all things. Amen. You see, God's got all power. He knows exactly what's going on anywhere in this universe. And there's a scripture in the book of Isaiah, and it helps us to better understand the magnitude of God's power. So I'm going to ask Pastor, instead of me quoting it, I'm going to ask my uh, right hand here, Pastor Annalisa, to take us to Isaiah chapter 45 and read verse 7 for us, please. Isaiah 45, 7 tells us this. I form the light mm -hmm. and I create darkness. Oh, I make peace and create calamity. I, mm -hmm. the Lord, I. do all these things. Oh, praise God. Amen. We could go on with that one, but we'll leave it there for now. Okay? Yeah. Lord says, I form the light and I create darkness. 
I make peace and I create calamity. Yes. That's some power right there. See, uh, th what, what I wanted us to see was get a, just a glimpse of the enormous and expansive measure of power that God has. Amen. God's got power, you all. Did you hear what Aunt Lisa said? Pastor, read that one more time for us. Said, I am the again. Lord, uh -huh. there, and there is no there other. no other. No, I said, no, you said 45, 7. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, I form the light right. and create darkness. He said, I make peace mm -hmm. and create calamity. Then he said, I, the Lord, do all these things. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and that tells you about the power of God. And I want to share something else with you all about his power and how he works even in me, even with me. I'm an under-shepherd of this church. And you see, when God gives me a message, it's up to me to put the message out. It's up to me to put it out no matter how long he says it. I don't move until he says, let's move on from this message. Now, with this message, he told me to get all the meat off the bone. He said, Joel, get all the meat off the bone. So what I do is at the end of each message, when we get home and we pray, I said, Lord, are we on another scripture this month? Another message? He said, don't be in a hurry. Stay there. So he told me, um, continue. Continue in this message. Okay, so I go back to the drawing board and I get everything that the Lord gives me and I, and I uh, detail it. And I'm, I'm his secretary, you could say. So what happened was uh, 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 <clears throat> I did ask the Lord, what shall I tell the masses of people in part 10 of our series called God's Got the Power? And as I began, uh, God's Got Our Power, but as I began working in obedience as per his instructions, for this message, this scripture, Isaiah 45, 7, just jumped out at me. As I was reading my Bible and as I was studying, it jumped out at me. It didn't do it once, it did it like twice. I couldn't get away from it. And I, I hadn't really paid attention to the scripture. I've seen it before, but you know, I see a lot of scripture. So so I just but something made me look at it because it 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 jumped out at me. And it's not a verse that I would normally use or or even you sparing me. I don't think I've ever used that verse before. Maybe once somewhere. Maybe before I was even a pastor. But here it came right up in front of me. So I began to read. And in reading it and studying it, because he said make sure you continue to study, I noticed not just one thing, but I noticed a couple of things. Okay, I noticed that this text of scripture points to the omnipotent power of God. In a way that it affirms that he forms light as well as darkness. He creates peace and yet calamity. Mm -hmm. This is God. Mm -hmm. It was as if he was saying, I've got the power to do just that. Mm -hmm. Only I have that power. Mm -hmm. Now who else could do such things but God himself? Who else could bring you into, into darkness and then take you back out? Uh, who else could do that? That you could be in, in the worst position of your life, but God says, I can create calamity. We know that because he did that with the ch children of Israel in, in uh, 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 Jeremiah 29, 12. And he said, and you'll, go, and you'll go and pray to me, and I'll listen to you. He said, I'll bring you back from captivity. captivity. Then he said, watch this. He says, I'll bring you back. To the place that I caused you to become captive. <laughs> Did you get that? Yes, we always did. stay at 2911. Say that again. Uh, I know the thoughts I have for you. Thoughts of peace <laughs> and not, not evil, evil, huh? Thoughts to give you a hope in the future. future then yeah. he said, But you'll go away and pray to me. And if you do that, he says, I'll listen to you. He said, and, 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 you'll, seek me. and you'll and you'll find me when you seek me. With all your heart. When you search for me. When you search for me with all your heart. He said, I'll bring you back from captivity. I'll bring you back. And, the, and people say, well, I've been in captivity. I've been in captivity a long time, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I've been, I've been tore from the floor up a long time. And then he tell you, he said, look here. He said, Don't worry, I'm going to bring you back because I sent you there. <laughs> I sent you there because you didn't know me. 
I sent you there because you didn't listen to me. I sent you there because I need you to get right. I sent you there because I have a perfect plan for you because I got all power. Amen. Amen. I can create calamity. Amen. He can bring you out of calamity. Oh boy, but he might let a little calamity come your way. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. And that's what the, the verse, if you, I'm looking at this verse and this verse that he kept putting in front of me and I'm looking at this, but I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12. And I'm seeing all, 13, I'm seeing all this out of Isaiah 45, 7. Do you see what I mean? Huh? Huh? Pastor Annalisa grieved me. And Pastor Annalisa grieved with me. That's right. <laughs> that's right. She's messing with me. She was messing with me, y'all, but that's, okay. that's another story. But anyway, the Lord said, I do all these things. So you see, folks, these scriptures are what I call puzzle pieces. I keep telling people. These are the puzzle pieces which, uh, when connected together and attached, they, they serve to complete the picture of God and his power. This is for all the doubters out there. They create the, the, the picture of God holding all power in his hand. And there's even more in this text because if you, if you study the word, God told me to study this, and he said, go back and study meditate on it, you'll find that when God had seen, I'm sorry, when God had spoken these words through Isaiah, the prophet, amen? That's what we're looking at in Isaiah 45. Isaiah was foreseeing something that was going to happen in the future. You all know that story about a king, a man named Cyrus who would be king, huh? who, who was not uh, 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 of the Lord. Well, he wound up being a, anointed, and he was the king of Persia, right? Okay? And he was used by God to take down Babylon, right? So, uh, because God had a plan for Israel, amen? So he used this man, Cyrus, okay? And that's what Isaiah is talking about. So get this, saints. When Isaiah spoke this message, King Cyrus uh, likely hadn't even been born. <laughs> He wasn't even a gleam in his daddy's eye, as the old saying used to be. He, he wasn't even around, okay? Yet, God put the message in his boy, and Isaiah said, say this, because I'm going to say this, because I got all power, and I'm about to create some calamity, because it needs to be done so I can save my people. Woo. You understand what I'm saying? You got to see it. It's estimated that this prophecy involving King Cyrus, it, it, was, it was uttered, a hundred or two hundred years before he even That's came on the scene. That's my God. Okay? This is what it's saying. So God is the one. Here's what we see. The Lord saying, That's right. That's right. I form light and darkness. I make peace. I make evil. It's I, the Lord, that do all these things. So the point is that God has absolute, irrefutable power. Amen. Absolute over all things that is proven throughout scripture and throughout the world. Some of you have been with the Lord a long time. Amen. I'm long telling time. you, I've seen your walks. Some of you, long before I was a pastor, you were in the Word. Long before I came, long before the Lord picked me up and, come here, you, you didn't yeah, know me, bones. and dropped me in the, in the church. And I had never been in a church until I was 49. Some of you have been in the church already. I know Sister Jeanette. And Sister and Jeanette and, and has, has been around you all. Yes. And she learned hey. some things now the Lord said. <laughs> hey, hey, Amen. hey. There used to be a movie called Pal uh, Have Gun, Will Travel. Y'all remember? <laughs> remember that movie? I'm dating myself. Have Gun, Will Travel. It was a, a marshal named Paladin. He had a badge, he would travel around, and he sent places and pick up criminals. Well, let me tell you something. With Sister Jeanette, the Lord had been giving her a car, and let me tell you something. She'd get all around in that car witnessing the people. You see? He's got a plan for your life. He uses you for his glory. Okay? He says, I can create some stuff. Okay? He's going to save his people. And that's what he does. So I must say, I'm so glad that God alone has this power. Maybe that's that mic I didn't. I don't think I turned it off. Check it. 
There's no other mic? Okay, see, I don't know about There's technology. Somebody though. must be on. Somebody's I, using, down Lisa I think somebody's in here might be on, on okay. using, using it with chores, so they need but to anyway. turn it off. Yeah, they need to turn off their... Uh, I'm so glad that God is the one with the power, but that still doesn't negate the fact that people want power, don't People want power, but they can't have enough power to be able to assume that they're God or gods. And that's what we're seeing in the world today, that people want to be God. They want to play God. Amen. Amen. But, uh, listen, friend, no other person, no other deity, no other God, so proclaimed God, self-proclaimed God, that says no either way, none of them, nobody can make the claim to have all power and then back it up, back up their claim, huh? Except the Lord God Almighty, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Nobody else can say they're going to die for you and come back, say, I'm going to do it. Watch, go down to the cemetery, go down to the crematorium, and I'll be back. Nobody's going to say that and show up except the Lord. He's the only one that did, okay? I'm just telling you, so when you start believing in that higher power, it says, show me yourself first, Mr. Power, okay? And all these people that believe in Buddha, at, check him out and see if Buddha didn't, Buddha was just from a family who wanted peace and enlightenment. Check out these deities. Nobody else had come back, died, witnessed, came back, seen by over 500 people, right. have people dying right. and, and martyred uh, because they were so taken by what they've seen. Nobody else had Amen. that kind of power Amen. but God. Amen. 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 It says in the Word. Amen. It Amen. says it in His Word. Amen. He was that, That's the godliness, for the, the mysteriousness of God. That he was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and poof, received up in glory. Nobody else has ever done it. Okay? Our God, the power of God, he's the one true God. So when the question, where is your power is asked, it's important for us to know that uh, where true supernatural power comes from, you all comes from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Because the time is drawing nearer. Nearer, nearer, nearer. The time is drawing nearer where this world is heading to its end. Amen. That's right. This chapter is coming to a close, you all. To some, it's already closed. Some people didn't make it. Some people didn't make it up this morning. That chapter is closed in their life. Amen. But even if we're alive, it's still coming to an end. Can't you see it? Can't you feel it? Yeah. Don't you know it? Okay? Yeah. The Lord will quicken you. He'll let you know. It's coming to an end. It's coming near. You know, uh, 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 I mean, the show is almost over. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Yes, the Bible says in 1 John, the <clears throat> world is quickly passing and the lust of it. Yes. You get me? Now, that was written a long time ago. Figure it out. You have to use all your fingers and toes to count. <laughs> but figure it out. If that was written way back then, and the Lord put it in the word that, that the world is quickly passing <laughs> and the lust of it, what's happening now in 2024? We don't want to change the Bible, but you could say the world is gone. It's already passed. The lust has grown to a level that we can't even bear it anymore. Amen. I wonder if people really know what Apostle John is saying in that verse. He's, he's saying, look, you all, your time on earth and in this fleshly encasement is limited time. It's temporary at best. That's what we have to, to, to understand. This fleshly body, this fleshly, our fleshly thoughts, our carnal uh, abilities are on the way. Okay, they're on the way out. Okay? I don't know what you like to do. Uh, if you're not going to turn from it, you better enjoy it while you can. Uh, if you don't know him, okay? Because the time is running out. It's going to run out, okay? Uh, because remember, this is all temporary. Temporary. It's temporary. You can't bank on this for a long time. We're here for a limited time with limited power. Human beings have limited power 
and they can use it yeah. for a limited time. I don't care who yeah. you are. I don't care how many Teslas you make. I don't care how many spaceships you design. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care. I don't care. It's limited. Man, limited. Man. Let, uh, pass it. Back this up. Let's, let's look at the scripture again. <coughs> First John. What's that? Uh, one. Two. First John. Chapter 1. No. no. First I mean, John chapter 2. Verse 15, 17, oh, please. You tested me, ain't you, Pastor? No, I'm, I'm going by your Yeah, watch my wife. She, <coughs> she slick, y'all. First she John chapter with. 1. No, I'm, I'm just reading what you have here. But you want me to go to First John chapter 2. Yeah, that one right there. Okay, this one. 2 through 15. You're testing me. <laughs> okay. 2 15 through 17. I skipped one. She said I'm testing her. Go ahead. Pastor. 2 15 through 17 says, do not love the world or the things in the world. Mm -hmm. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Oh, and right. then it says in 17, and the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. All right. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Absolutely. Amen. Um, the church saying, that's telling us Amen. that what? The Amen. things of this world are temporary, you all. I don't care how much you like it. I don't, know how much, I don't care how much it thrills you. It's only for a moment. Passing pleasures. Things that we can easily be enamored with won't last long. Because as human beings, we can quickly fall in love with some things, can't we? We can start loving the objects of our desires. Whatever those desires are, we, we, we fall for them. And that's why we have to know Jesus. Amen. Jesus was here uh, before the foundation. Now, Pastor, that's what you wanted me to go to, I think. That's what I gave you. Tell them about John, book of John. We're going to go right back to First John. But go to John 1, please. John, uh, John chapter Just 1, 1 through 5 says yeah. this. Just read what it says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeah. He was in the beginning with God. All these things were made things through were made him. him, and without him nothing was nothing made, made that was made. That was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And the light shines in the darkness, light and the darkness in. did not comprehend it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. She read that real fast. But but absolutely, I couldn't. I ain't even got to it yet. But <laughs> now I see it. Okay, the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. It says without Him, nothing was made that was made. And Him was life, and the life was the light of men. But the light didn't they didn't comprehend it. They didn't understand, didn't understand it. it. Okay. Just because you don't understand God don't mean that he's not God. Amen. Just because you haven't seen God doesn't mean that he's not there. Amen. He was there in the beginning. It says all things were made all through him. Things. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Amen. That tells me that he has all power. Amen. That tells me that he created some things. That means that he... But we go back to Genesis that he did just what it says in Genesis. He spoke the world into existence. He said, be, and it was. That's the way we got here. Be. He said, I'm going to create man from dust. Okay, male and female. Okay, I created them. So, so we know that. Now, going back to uh, uh, 1 John uh, 15 to 17, things are temporal. God knew that when he designed it. It, it. This is a temporal life that we're in right now. And because we get in, uh, uh, we fall in love with our own desires, things we like to do, don't we fall for them? Mm -hmm. you, fall, you fell for your, did you fall for your first love? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Yolanda gave me a minute that night. Nice. And man of God. Yay! I fell for my first love. I did. But praise God. God knew what I needed. He knew what I needed. He knew what I needed. 
<laughs> but I like it or not, he do what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know what was happening. And I didn't own the car. So <laughs> I was busting it in Converse All Stars. And, and he still sent me a, a girlfriend, <laughs> a future wife. So praise God. But I'm saying you can fall in love with some things, but not everything you love is good for you. Thank God that she was good for me and she helped me. And we help each other and we love each other. It's a godly relationship. But it's not always that way, some of the things you love. You all remember the Buzz Bunny show? I grew up on the, I'm sorry, I grew up on cartoons. And in the Buzz Bunny program, they had a program called Crazy Cat. Y'all remember oh, Crazy yeah. Cat? Yeah. Crazy Cat was about a cat that loved a mouse. <laughs> Think about that. Cats eat mice. Yeah. Mice know that. So the crazy cat loved the mouse, but the mouse didn't love Crazy Cat. Yes. Right? right? And the cat would try to chase the mouse and love the mouse, and the mouse be hiding in the little hole and come out the hole. And when the cat come, the mouse would have a brick and he would go, he would throw that brick and it would tell boom, and then would hit crazy. Cat. He would brick crazy cat. He uh, that was a cartoon stoning. He would hit break cat, crazy cat with the with this brick, and they would show them stars tweet 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 tweet, and she would say, "Oh, love that mouse." She just loved it. You remember that? I thought that was the funniest cartoon. But now I see that that's how we are. Everything you love ain't good for you. Amen. Everything you desire is not good for you. The things we see in this temporal, temporal world that we're desiring isn't good for us, you all. The, the word said, that this world, the Lord is telling us the world is passing. And the lust of it. Some of us are tied up in those things. We love getting drunk. Can't help ourselves. We love creeping around. You know, women on the side, men on the side, adultery, different things like that. The sinful activity that's glorified by the world's standards, right? All these things are glorified these days. Just look at a typical TV channel. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go to any kind of X-rated channel. Just regular prime time channels. Amen. And see, don't you see sinful stuff going on? All the time. All the time, even worse. <laughs> Doesn't it embarrass you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw a commercial. I can't even sing the commercial. It's about California. Is this a commercial? You know that California dream and remember that song? Yeah. On such a winter's day. Now they changed the word. They said California's leaving. I work so. And she used a bad word, hard. But I still can't pay my rent or something like that. California's leaving. California's leaving. That. But why do they have to put the curse word in there? Why? Why? My grandchildren and everything. And they say it twice. That's because of the nature of things. Now that I put it in your head, you're going to see that commercial if you have it. Because they're showing it all over the place. And they use the curse word, the D word. I work too uh, darn hard. Except that they don't say Darn. But so so I'm telling you, what I'm getting to is that this is the world. Things are uh, the movies that they show after seven o'clock and six o'clock at night. A uh, 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 rescue, nine one one, and all these other man. They got some almost X-rated stuff they're showing. That's true. And they're making it. They're normalizing it. But the Bible tells us, don't be enamored. Now, don't fall in love with this stuff where you got to tune into it and watch it every week because it'll program you. Okay, you'll become indoctrinated. Okay, that's what goes on. Our children, our young people, they're being indoctrinated. Okay, uh, uh, you, and you know who's at the root of all that, right? The devil, amen? The adversary, of course. I mentioned uh, uh, that to the people of India the other night when we did the end of broadcast. The devil has more power than us. He has more power than man. Even in your best efforts, you cannot best the devil. Okay? Okay? You can talk about him all you want to talk about stomping on the devil's head. Okay? All right. All right. You better, you better have some backup. You better know who you are, where your help comes from before you start talking about, about him. 
All right? The devil has more power than man does, more power than you and I, and he uses that power and that persuasiveness to bait and hook. Bait and hook you like a fish. Amen. Amen. He sets the bait out there. He gets you to essentially buy in to sin. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants you to do. Buy in to sin. Okay, am I right? Yeah. Listen, <clears throat> we've heard about Jesus and, and the topic of fishing all through the Bible. But there's another fisherman out there too. Okay, and that's the devil. See, he's on the prowl. He's fishing too. He's walking to and fro like it said in Job when the Lord said, well, what are you up to, devil? He said, oh, just walking back and forth along the, among the earth, on the earth. I'm just fishing. Uh-huh. Fishing to see who he can take down. Amen. All right? Satan is doing a little fishing himself. And that's what prowling around like a roaring lion means, okay? It means he's on the prowl. He's stealthily in the bushes. He's trying to get you to do certain things, trying to get you to uh, act Contrary to what the Lord wants you to, to how the Lord wants you to act. Uh, uh, as we read in 1 John 2, 15, 17, it warns you not to be hooked by the devil. Amen. Do not love the things of the world. If you love it too much, you're going to be hooked in by the devil. Okay, I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. But let me give you a visual. Uh, let's, let's use another movie. Back in the day, there was a movie called Jaws. <laughs> That's a fisherman movie, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, you hear the music? <laughs> the, this is the first one with the big jaw. That big old, it was a big juicy uh, great white, right? That big giant size great white. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And, and, and how it was just, how that fisherman shot it, shot that, shot the, uh, uh, the, the, the shark. But you remember what he did? He had like a, a, a torpedo gun or something. And he shot that, 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 that torpedo and it was sticking that shark and that shark took off. He took off and went under the water and it was like pulling the boat and everything. And then he shot him again with another harpoon, boom. And, he just, and no matter where the shark went, you would see those things stuck in him, right? He had been torpedoed. He was going to be real then, but that was a powerful shark. So they had to blow him up, okay? They eventually blew him up. But what I'm saying is I just, I know that's Hollywood. That's Hollywood. It is just a movie and it's fiction. But we can use that visual to see how Satan is harpooning us. And when you get one stuck in you and you go back to your sin, he harpoons you again. And you running around with all these harpoons in your rear end because Satan, <laughs> Satan has got you. <laughs> I'll just feel them. Satan has got you. I was on the boat. <laughs> Satan has got you uh, uh, locked in the sin. See, that's what he wants to do. He wants to reel you in. And if you're not careful, boy, oh boy, he will. He will. He will blow you up. That's right. That's right. That's right. He'll blow your life up. He'll have you doing things and going after things that you have no business going after. He'll have you behaving in ways that you can't even control your emotions. Huh? You arguing. Fighting, fussing, cussing, kicking, spitting. You're doing all kinds of things. I was just asking. Especially marriages, right? Amen. <laughs> I rebuke you, no, I rebuke you, no, I rebuke you, no, I rebuke you. Poof, they both just disappear. Lord, they didn't any of it. Lord, the angel's like, He's gone. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. See, Lord, we got them both. Which one shall we cancel out? You know. <laughs> that devil. See, and because we as Christians, we want to talk about people that don't know the Lord. We're always talking about we're going to lead somebody to the Lord. Sometimes we are like, we can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll come over and help you. No thanks. <laughs> That's your wife I saw with the black eye. <laughs> You know, those things happen in our lives sometimes. 
But I'm saying we have to know that the devil is busy. Yes, he is. And he wants to harpoon us all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's that's that, that's the visual that we need to. We don't want to go around with a bunch of harpoons stuck in us because we're great white. Okay? Or whatever color we are. We don't want to <laughs> it might be a great black, a great brown, a great whatever. A great white shark. But that's what that's what we're seeing. Um in this in in in, in in the spiritual, you have to be able to see in the spiritual to see what's going on in your life in the natural. Amen. Amen. And so we become an easy catch for the devil. <clears throat> but no, Satan is after big fish. He's not just after <clears throat> he's not just after unsaved people. They're like minnows to Satan. Huh? Nobody. I'm not. I, I've, I've only been fishing once in my life, so I. I make no claim to know about fishing. But I think you want to go and get a big catch. Uh, I've seen people that catch the little fish and they, they're happy with it, but they like the one they can hang up. Right? They hang that fish up, maybe about that long, <laughs> or at least that long. They, something that you really got to work to scale it, I guess. But, but that's, that, that's how Satan is. Satan is looking for that big catch. Huh? Satan looking for that, 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 that big catch. Uh, spiritually, yeah. I call it the BBF. Okay, BBFC. Since we got all kinds of acronyms going on, I, I made it my own. That big backsliding faking Christian. That's the one I want. The BBFC. That Satan wants to catch you. Huh? That's the one that talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Huh? That's the one that tell everybody else to show up and you don't see them. Okay. <laughs> That's the one that show up at the parties, that show up at the events, but won't show up to service, right? That BB, BBFC, the big backsliding fake Christian. That's the one. That's the if Satan. That's the one Satan goes after, because he's gonna hang you that up. That's so true. And he's gonna say, "Look at what I got." Mm, it's so because Satan is a liar. He's gonna use the BBFC and say, "This is the C H U R C H." This is the church. See, he uses that BBFC to say all Christians are like this. Yeah, that's so true. All Christians say Jesus. something, but they don't do it. Jesus, church. All Christians look good and praise. We're good at praying and praising, huh? But what we're really doing is playing. Mm -hmm. Satan say, oh, I saw you praising, I saw you praying, I saw you praising, but you were just playing, huh? And he, boom, shoots another harpoon in him. See, that's what he does. That's exactly. What, what does Revelation 3, 15, 16 tell us, Pastor? I don't know. I'm not there. Revelation okay. what? 15. Revelation 15. I'm sorry, 3, 15. 3, 15 and 16. Revelation 3, 15. Mm -hmm. See, these are just things for us to think about because this is what it means when we, uh, 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 when we subvert God's power. Revelation 3.15 uh, to 17? To 16. To 16. Okay. What does it it say? says this. It says, I know your works, mm -hmm. that you are neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. I would wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. All right. Oh. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, when we... <clears throat> When we see that we are in the church, so I believe the same things apply to us nowadays. We know that Jesus was talking to the seven churches, but we are churches today, are we not? Huh? Yeah. Are we not? And he's talking about doers of the word. We can go to we can go all the way back to uh, uh, James one twenty two and say, "Be doers of the word, not hearers only," because you deceive yourself. He said, "Because uh, when you come to me and you think you're getting here, he said, I'm, I'm gonna spew you out." See, he wants you to be hot or cold. He wants us uh, not lukewarm, not in between, not coming and, or not showing up or show up when we want to show up and different things like that. See, the devil wants to expose some people. And it's even worse. It gets worse because now you've got uh, congregations and you've got pastors and so-called leaders that are being so much, doing so much uh, ungodly and wicked works that Satan has got his bull, he's got you in his bullseye. And now nobody wants to come to church. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, how do you witness to people that really need it when they say, you can't help yourself, how are you going to help me? Mm -hmm. I've seen your act. You were at the bar, you were at the crack <coughs> house. I remember a police officer friend of mine, and I didn't know, I didn't know. I was doing some heavy duty police work at that time, you all. Y'all, well, y'all see this woman right here? What I do? She, 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 I'm gonna give you a compliment. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm gonna hold it. <laughs> but, but she was, she, she, she didn't know it, but, <clears throat> but there was some action going on in her husband's life because, uh, I was doing some heavy duty police work, and one of the guys that used to uh, give me a ride into work would always say, where y'all working today? Because I worked a special assignment, I was in a special unit. And uh, I used to tell him the area we were going to be in, where he was going back giving the information to other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know it. Nice, nicest guy you ever want to meet. And one day my car, you know me in them old car, my old car wasn't working. And I said, hey, can you come by and give me a ride to end the work? He gave me a ride. He said, hey, where do you live? Because I let, met, I met him on a certain street. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to go by the house. I said, I ain't got time right now. I said, let's get out. We're going to be late. Anyway, he took me to work. And what happened was, about two months later, uh, <clears throat> there was a shooting. And uh, they said a crack house had been robbed. And uh, there was a, uh, uh, they said, we got two or three units en route. And they said, we got one down. And then they said, oh, and we, here's, here's the, the suspect car. We got the plate. And they put the plate out. And they said, it's eastbound on uh, 105th and Eads. And it was going through the di different area. And, and the dispatcher said, looks like it belongs to. Then she said, oh, my God, it's an open police officer. That's what she said. It came out on the air. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the same guy that used to pick me up. Turned to find out he was in deep and Hawk, and he was on drugs, and he was had been dealing, and he had been working on the other side. And you see, he had gotten lured in. He had gotten fished, and he could not get out, okay? And he wound up doing time. He yeah. got caught. He had, he had uh, been at the crack house all night getting high, and then uh, when he ran out of money and, and ran and had sold his watch and his car, he came back and he came out with an automatic weapon and said, give me all the money and the drugs. And they said, you? They said, he said, police. <laughs> Can you imagine? You got a Uzi and you standing there tweaking, talking about <laughs> <laughs> police. <laughs> give me my, put it right there, put it right there, put it. They said, man, you must be crazy. <laughs> I said, you ain't no cop. You a crackhead just like us. Everybody started shooting poo poo, poo poo, poo poo. Everybody opened up. Well, that's what happens to the BBFCs. Devil say, You? Yeah, I don't know. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And you going out to witness to somebody and they seeing your walk in Christ. Same. Same analogy, just spiritual, okay? We don't want to turn anybody the wrong way. But some of us are doing what we want to do. We got folks that won't come to service. Or so God said, okay, you ain't got to come. I'm making everything virtual. Will you come there? Some won't. Some will. Some will come when they want to. And I'm just saying that the shoe fits. Everybody got a reason to do what they got to do. But realistically, when time is running out and we know time is running out, can we make it or not? Can you make it or not? I don't know. Only God knows. I don't judge people that way. I, I, I'd be lying if I told you I feel like giving a word every day. Some days I just feel like being left alone, okay? But I have a job to do, and I will not uh, stray away from the Lord. I'm going to do his job if it kills me, until he calls me home, or until he comes. I'm going to be waiting, okay? If I can walk, if I can crawl, if I can lay down, whatever the case may be, this is my job. Now, other people have to figure out what's your job. Amen. 
The devil is hoping you don't know. The devil is hoping you don't care. The devil is hoping that you make your own rules. The devil is hoping you show up when you want to. The devil is hoping that you don't even tune in. We got some people right here right now. Poor Johnny. Johnny got three, two, three cell phones. <laughs> I just wrote three, okay, his wife said three. I just realized that today, because he's on call right now. If they call him, he got to go. But he's here. But he's here. I don't know if we all can make that claim. I know some people don't have cars. You got neighbors. Some people don't have transportation. You got an Uber. Some people have the money. We'll loan it to you. Maybe just give it to you if you want to get there. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what kind of excuses we can make. Okay? So these are the things that the devil still knows what kind of BBFC he's dealing with. Amen. We may not know. Okay? Some people don't want to drive 15 minutes to a church. Half hour to a church. Pay toll. Huh? Pay toll to a church. But they'll show drive to Cash Creek. <laughs> they'll show drive to Sin City. They'll drive to Vegas and Reno. Be up there watching Michael Jackson's show doing the moonwalk. They'll be watching all of that, right? But don't want to come to church. <laughs> it's too far. I gotta pay that toll. You know, California dream, man. You know, they get back on that kick. Okay? But we'll do some things for fun and frivolity. We like games, don't we? We love our games. Say no to that. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, we love our games. We love our, we love our entertainment. The word is not entertainment. The, the Lord said this world is passing quickly. Remember that. Okay, I ain't going to even get into the rest of that. That's too much. I ain't going to get into tithing, making offerings, things like that. Well, just a little bit. <laughs> Some people won't give an offering to save for years. You wonder how they take all them vacations. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. BBFCs say knows about it. And there's nothing wrong with a little rest and recuperation. Uh, but like I said, uh, the world's idea of a break, you can't take a break from Christ. You, take a, you can't take a break from God. No. no more than you can take a break from breathing. Mm -hmm. How long can you hold your breath? Mm -hmm. huh? That's how it is. This is the very God that gave, that put breath in our body. Uh, there's a scripture in Job. Uh, did I give you that one, Pastor? Yes, sir. Read that scripture, would you please? 33 and 4. This is one of Sister Jeanette's favorite scriptures, and it makes sense. Go ahead, Pastor. Job, I, I, I'm sorry, Pastor. I had it, and then I, I missed it. Oh, that's it. all right. Job 33 and 4. Uh -huh. What does it say? Okay, Job 33 and 4 says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of, of the Almighty gives me life. Amen. Amen. So that you, Ms. J. Just let Ms. J just say it. Huh? Mm -hmm. But, but, <laughs> but, but anyway... God, <laughs> God supplies our very breath, stop that, the very breath that we breathe, right? He breathed life into mankind from the very start, and he sustains our breath till the very end, Amen. right? Gives you breath from the start, he sustains you till it's over, amen? Nobody else can do that. Such is the power of God. We've got to understand that, you all, Amen. So as we, as we begin to uh, close out for the day, consider what it takes to not be caught on that devil's fish hook. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. This is what you must do. Pastor, take us to the book of James, 4, okay. 7 uh, to 10. Okay, let me get there. James 4, 7 says this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay. Oh, the 10. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Mm -hmm. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Mm -hmm. Then it says to lament and lament. mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your, and your joy to gloom. 
And then verse 10 says to humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> you know, if you know your Bibles, you know what this passage means all together, right? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sure you all know what it means. Some of you may not. <clears throat> But if you don't know your Bible, you're likely, likely you don't know what, the, what it means because you likely don't know God. All right? Uh, let alone be submitted to him. You got to know God to submit to him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you got to get to know him, man. You get to know him, right? The bottom line is that unless you submit to God, you won't be able to resist the devil. Amen. First thing you got to do is what Paul did on the road to Damascus, right? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus who you're persecuting. Don't you know you can't kick against the goat? And what was Paul's next word? What would you have me do, Lord? That's submitting to God, okay? You've seen all kinds of atrocious behavior in the patterns of the world today. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. A two-year-old killed his baby sister. He was two. How old was she? Stabbed. Death. A spirit. Where did it come from? Generational? Where's the father? Where's the mother? How did this happen? What's the mindset? That devil says, I'm walking around like the earth lion. like a roaring lion. I take kids, women, mm -hmm. children, good-looking people and ugly people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want them all. Fat and skinny, you got a place with me. Huh? Don't matter. You got flesh on you, I want you. Babies, love them. Mm. Old folks, love them. Devil take them out. We got to see this. We got. You can't fight him unless you submit to God. To God. You take your relatives and turn them against you. Amen. We're seeing this stuff. Uh, uh, baby killing, killing a child. Women murdering their husbands and vice versa. And their children. Huh? Their children. Years ago, I saw a young man. I don't even know what to him. I ain't going to tell you what he did. Anyway, I can't even say it. Forget it. Killed his sister. But that wasn't enough. Now, I didn't rape her. It wasn't no sexual thing. Cannibalized. Mm -hmm. If you ever seen a person's head open up and somebody eating out of it like it's a bowl of soup? No. That's the devil. And this was before I knew the Lord. And that kid was looking for help. We just couldn't help him. He was looking for help. He was hanging out with police. He was coming around us. He, he was on his own, he had no parents, and he got whacked out with PCP. He bludgeoned his sister, and that's what he was doing when we arrived. So it's a hodgepodge of sin, it's an assortment of evil and wickedness that pervades our world today even worse than it used to be, right? And it's all part of the devil's handiwork. So this passage tells us what to do about it. I said earlier, uh, that the message is simple. simple. It's intense, but it's simple. What do we have to do? It says it right there. Submit to God. Submit to God. Submit to God. Raise it. Amen. The devil. That's what we have to do. Submit to God. We have to submit to God. There's no way that we can. Uh, 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 that's 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 the starting point. We submit to Him. Amen. Amen. For anyone wanting to be free from the grip of sin and from devil from the devil's fish hook. You've got to submit to God. All right? So in closing, do your part. Do your part. Let's do our parts. Truly, truly submit to God, and we'll be able to resist that devil. You'll be able to resist the devil if you don't know him. And those of us who do know him, we need to be obedient to him. Amen? Yeah. That's the next part. But first, submit to God, 
and you'll be able to resist that devil because although Satan has power, guess what? God has all, all power. power. Amen. Amen. So where's yours? I hope you'll find it in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 That's all for today. Praise God. Uh, I believe, Pastor, Brother Johnny is going to come up and minister a song, and then I'll be back to close out. Terry, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. If you start having an agreement with your wife and pass out, and Lisa happens to call at that very moment, <laughs> I mean, that's happened more than once. It's happened more than twice. I said, okay, Lord, I got it. You know, and so <laughs> we were watching a movie last Friday, I think it was, or Saturday, and and we, I just sat down, getting ready to watch the movie with the wife, and and oh, she's being Yolanda, and and, uh, and, and Pat and Lisa called. I said, okay, it's the third time she did that when I'm trying to talk to her. <laughs> so, uh, just letting you guys know, man. Just, anyway, we have we have so so much to be thankful for. Amen. Uh, we can't thank God enough. You know. I hear people on the street, even at my job, they say, oh, thank you, Lord. They don't actually know what they should be really thankful for. You know, uh, they still have them. He still has them there. They have jobs, good jobs. I know we work at a beer company, but it's still a good job. You know, and, you know, I was thinking, how much, when I was doing, uh, practicing the song this weekend, of how much I have to be thankful for. I can't hear you, brother. Uh-oh. Where's Mike? <laughs> she usually said, louder! But she used to say, what you I have so much to be thankful for. <laughs> and, and, uh, That's the part I want you to hear. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do like pastor now. Not, I was going to give you a compliment, but I'm taking it back. <laughs> um, yes, I, I am thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for you. Because my Christian brothers and friends, uh, when I see you going through some things, and, and we talk about those things, and pray about those things, uh, it, it can you don't know who it could help. Somebody else may be going through that very same thing. But we have to thank the Lord for everything yes. He's done for us. Amen. Because Amen. He continues to do things for us. Amen. Even though some, some of us may believe that, well, you know, the Lord may not be answering you on the time that you want it. But it's always right on time. Amen. It's always been that way for me. So, and I want to I wanna thank the Lord. And I want to sing to the Lord. And as I sing the song, and you guys can help me. Sing it to the Lord. And, and mean it. Thank the Lord for everything he's done for you. You too, sissy, a lot.